Folks, a quick second on internal reflections, okay? NASA's got their crap, and basically we know that scientists argue all the time. So they have electrical physicists, I'm sure, at NASA, okay? There's going to be have to be a certain amount and probably maybe 200 of them, okay? They break things up in that because I know like on a satellite there's like 200 people, okay? 200 scientists controlling a project, okay? Like the moon one right now. There would be 200 scientists that are in control of that, okay? And there might be some overload somewhere or something like that. Okay, now we go to basically looking at the meatball, which we know is there, and which we know is not an internal reflection because the internal reflections come off like this and they are energy. First thing, basically, any electrical engineer with NASA kiss my living lily white ass because the idea that anything electrical and all I got to do is show you fiber optic cable. Yes, I know, in redundancy, and that's as far as we're going to go with, about communications, okay? Uh, I'm an electrician, data, yep, it's in our scope, okay, so copper wires, yes, redundancy, fiber optic, okay, as far as I'm going, we know that being electricians, okay, we in space know that from the studies that NASA has done that the idea that even after an element burns up in a tube is a vacuum, just like in space, the idea that fact that they have figured, at least that's what they factoidly tell us, that uh, their studies have proven that the idea, even, even after material burns in a t vacuum tube, that flame still burns for a while, okay? Low voltage, static electricity, these CMEs going through space. We know that this object here does exist. We know that it is not an internal reflection right here. And let me go to this site here, i.e. the static cling, the static electrical cling, just like if uh, something's stuck in your hair. Uh, I could talk pornographical, I could talk anything about hair, but basically these planets stick in space on a magnetical and also dead planets just stay with it. I.e. you can possibly find anybody who will talk about internal reflections, okay? Recently it has been discovered that Venus puts off electrical energy to other planets, okay? And vice versa, all of them pretty much do because of their static cling in the hairs in their orbits in space, okay? And yes, some dead planets orbit, float around in space. Do not know, I do not know too much about a dead planet that doesn't have electrical energy in it, okay? But we do know that these stay in rotation, just like uh, components of an electrical motor. And now basically we have satellite shots over here showing you the idea of like uh, H12's telescope and all the items on there. Not going to get too technical in there, slaving on this stuff. The, uh, the facts are that we know electrical energy, fiber optic cable is the thing to make people wake up. If you've ever seen even a commercial for a common layperson in the past of light going through a fiber optic, yes, folks, electrical energy can be seen as light through a fiber optic cable, okay? Light speed, okay? The, and uh, so that being said, Looking at my last two videos, a lot of people's light bulbs in their heads went on and going like, damn, Bino is right. Even common, whatever, or even phone talking to a scientist. That's not an electrical engineer, but he's a physicist or something working in some space. I don't care. Just keep feeding me what you feed me. And my theories are always going to be my theories and finds. So I won't always blow everything. I got tons of stuff that's basically wrote down somewhere. And a lot of stuff that's just right in my head. So no one can steal it. Okay, so as we zoom in on uh, still of when Comet Lovejoy was showing its electrical energy in space, and also we've seen these what they call internal reflections, and yes, a camera will pick that up. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into the knowledge that I know about pictolite, but all you need to do is study pictolite, and anybody who's an electrical engineer for NASA knows what I'm talking about, or anybody who's an electrical engineer and knows pictolite. Okay, and i.e. my discovery earlier that the idea then is probably already, maybe possibly, but the idea that I have a dated in time to what I found out with showing sunlight to the sun. Okay, and it gets a reaction, and it get, and basically it's part of the secret technical of pictolite. Okay, of certain or it's a new invention of mine, and that's all dated and stamped and on the internet electronically. Uh, the uh, the government and basically the Library of Congress pretty much probably gets everything I get because I know I'm being spied on. Okay? So basically, all kaputska. So we do know that these are internal, that they want to call it flares, 
camera flares, okay? But what that is is actual electrical energy in space, folks, and we know that and they know that. And that's how you can tell that it's totally different than what you see up here because it's so, we know that the meatball is so damn large because no matter if this is the, uh, an internal reflection, which it's not, because the camera picks these internal reflections up when they get light, so then what the hell is given, though, then we do know that for damn sure that's the meatball behind up by Neptune, Uranus, uh, Pluto, and all that stuff like that, because we know that we've seen on Worldwide Telescope, you go Worldwide it's a Telescope, and you will see the suns that have been found way back behind uh, Uranus, okay? There are some suns back there. We got some glimpse when it had to be just right to have planets out of the way to be able to get a glimpse in and you go to Worldwide Telescope and you'll pick that stuff up. Now when you're at Worldwide Telescope and when you're at anything like, uh, when you're at anything, if you go to Whiskey, this, that, everything, anybody could always end up doctoring this or that, i.e. you have different photo th things that you go by and even on Soho, but they don't play with us, we hope we're getting an ominous deal like in a poker game. I know Riverboat casino owner, okay, so I know tricks in uh, sleight of hand, okay, so what we have here is the idea that an exact fact that the idea that we know and everybody knows that's been watching the videos lately is like, damn, Bino is right, electrical energy, we've seen Comet Lunjoy change around, just like fiber optic uh, light in a fiber optic cable, okay, basically communications, and I'm you know, on the government side in America and the whole nine yards, that's all secretive, okay, all kinds of secrets about communication, okay? But the light energy, basically, we've seen Lovejoy turn around and get electrical transfiction from static in space and these CMEs off the sun and has changed its tail and direction around, not direction where it's going, and we'd also know that Bino has showed you that it's basically a triangulation of three objects. More than likely, or exactly, we know that there's two objects because we've seen two objects of what Bino showed you in his videos that went into the sun. It was way more than just one object might even been more than three objects, okay? Tons of triangulation in space, folks. Things break up in space in threes. If something man-made breaks up in space or gets blown up, it'll look like a bunch of pencils out there in space. I.e., that when you see on Worldwide Telescope and stuff, a lot of stuff that's in deep, deep, deep space that we've picked off off of Hubble's pictures and stuff or anything that's anything that we've ever gotten pictures back, human here on Earth, the idea that when we see pencils out in space, and I mean it like pencils, in space, when a satellite blows up, anybody can find footage on the Chinese satellite that got blown up in space. And I, I know maybe there's, there's one or maybe more than one that has. And a lot of other stuff that's been blown up in space, like rocket boosters and stuff like that, it looks like pencils, folks. And it stays in space like a dead planet almost. Okay? So, yes, folks, dead planets might move around a little bit or something like that, whatever space is going to do with it. Because NASA knows that there's been different movement on all kinds of dead objects in space. Okay? We know that this is light, and we know that it's electrical energy. And it also, any electrician is going to tell you the same thing, and any scientist, that if you got light, you got electrical energy, okay, no matter where. And we know that electrical, uh, we know that fire burns, like I've already explained about uh, a, a tube in, in space. And space is a vacuum, it's a tube, okay, out there. Okay, and so no matter what, this is all behind the super, and you've seen even better footage. So basically, just go watch the last two videos before this, and let me go back and show you on another guy's video that you will see that the idea that this shows up when it comes up like that, abroad there like that. Well, this is always solid, and it moves around the meatball, folks. And no matter what, then if it's getting a ref if it's getting an internal reflection, and yes, internal reflections, and the cameras find it, okay? And you can end up going to... Uh, stereo and you'll find look up artifacts and look up image artifacts internal reflections and they try to explain it okay but we know as electricians and scientists and knowledgeable people that it's electrical energy you can't have light without electrical energy now folks when you go to the internet you can see other people's YouTube videos and so forth and this guy does a big old comparison of the idea then and basically he basically is lying to himself because as you've seen in that part of that video there and we're going to back that up so you can see it and what you will notice is you will see the big meatball okay and you will see uh, also these internal reflections which are light energy in space 
that gets the, what is getting picked up from a planet, like when you look at Earth and see Earth glow and like all these live planets like Jupiter and Mars that could sustain life, possibly, if we can keep their atmosphere like Earth's atmosphere and also enough away from any sun to be at the right temperature for human compatibility and also water. We can always take water from Earth and put it there or from any other planet or any other source, okay? But we have not been able to make water yet. Now, it is possible scientifically, theory-wise, that we could make water out of space. There's moisture out there. It's cool. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Bino is a smart mofoler. Okay. Yeah. So on this old archive footage that he's got combined together, you will see how electrical energy uh, from various planets communicate with the CME's electrical energy that comes off the sun. Okay, and then the gaseous states or other materials in its gaseous state or aura, which is almost perfectly circular, will put off a electrical energy flare and fight off the CMEs. We have our atmosphere here on Earth. Okay, uh, you should see the meatball here pop in here pretty soon. And this is old archival footage i.e. as you can see that the meatball goes by and does not go out like a internal camera flare and then you can go to five years of Sechi H1 movies is what the, he's pretty much got matched in here and as you seen the meatball just moved away there okay so no matter what it's got a big ass whether it's not that large or not its gaseous state or protection layer when it's moving through space is that damn large okay now when you see the core that he's got up there that's the satellite folks moving through space okay and then everything else is uh, an object in space there may be some uh, satellites but the idea of satellites are very tiny don't let them fake bake you and make you that a, a satellite looks so huge out there in space with light reflection it does get a lot bigger than what it is looking wise but it doesn't get anything comparable to a planet size okay and as you see again you can see the dimension size of the CME hitting in the gaseous state of these other planets and electrical energy going off so it's nothing new but the idea that it's electrical energy light is electrical energy and as you see that that's the electrical energy of the outside state of whatever that object is that moving around in space all the time and it's not the f it's not the uh, solar reflection of the sun moving through space, folks. Okay? It's not. Okay? It's an actual gaseous state of a large planet or a planet, absolutely, no matter what, because it moves through space solidly. It's not a, uh electrical light signal. It might have a solid s circular signal around it when it's moving through space. And it's not these gigantic that get put off by Jupiter, which we know is to be the largest thing we know in the Milky Way galaxy. Now, 747 times is that one object that I've showed you before in my videos that we know is the, probably the, no, the so far is the largest object ever found in space by scientists. There is something that's 747 times the size of the sun. In the supergiants, there is four to 78 times the size of the sun actual suns, a hundred brightest of the suns that are in, that are stars, that are in the supergiant's main belt sequence and in the giant's main sequence, and that's why they call it the supergiant's main sequence, okay? Uh, let me take you to a shot of that real fast, and I'll show you the sun where it was back a few months ago, about three months ago, and it's the supergiant's main sequence, and these stars move around. That's Rigel Cantaris A. Hey, folks, when's the last time somebody talked about Pioneer? It's got this nice gold plate out there in space. Yep. Has it seen anything lately? What's up with the, all the pioneers out there? I don't even know if this one's still out there, but I think pioneers still out there. So today's there's what you'll see. You'll see Mercury and Venus. B behind it gets Venus, and A gets Mercury. So we've got that we know A heads Mercury and B is Venus. And with just sliding up, you can tell and know that that is Venus because it's bigger than Mercury, which is very tiny. I would suspect it's here because this is the magnetic of it and we'll go up to the pictures and you will see that the idea I was right because there you go smaller is Mercury and larger is Venus that's the Sun I believe because if I move over here we should see Venus 
putting off its electrical energy, what they call an internal lens flare. Um, so scientifically wasting your tax dollars at NASA because we see electrical energy internal my ass. Okay, so the idea anyway, they can't have hookers and beer there. So anyway, I'll stay here giving you the truth, ladies and gentlemen.